ever wondered what a world record holder eats? I am about to eat the exact same diet as the GOAT of running, marathon world record holder, and only human being to run under two hours for that distance, Eliud Kipchoge. I want to find out whether eating like a champion can mean you're more likely to run like a champion. So I'll be eating exactly what Eliud Kipchoge eats on a typical training day, and I think you'll be surprised. It's breakfast time! Pre-long run breakfast today, so I've got my Elliot breakfast, got myself a nice chai tea with two teaspoons of sugar, although I'm told that he often has multiple tablespoons of sugar in his chai tea. Don't think I could hack that. I'm normally an English breakfast tea, no sugar gal, so this is probably as far as I can take it. And then the main meal, we've got two slices of white bread, with nothing on it, and a banana. Now, Elliot will often have one or two slices of white bread before the long run, and a banana on a really hard day. Long run counts as a hard day for me, but I'm very aware that Elliot might be eating just one or two slices of bread, no banana, when he's running twice the distance that I'm running today. So, that's fine. I feel a little bit inferior, but this <laughs> is an amount of food that I feel comfortable eating before the long run. That's breakfast. I guess it's time to chow down. So the good news is, Elliot drinks around three liters of water a day, so this is also included. Oh, it feels needed. This is um, it's quite dry. I mean, it's white bread. Not much to be annoyed about. It's not a taste sensation, but it's fine. I also woke up super hungry this morning. I don't know why. Um, we had a really good dinner last night. A very not Elliot Kipchoge meal. That's mostly fueling this run this morning. Obviously breakfast fuels the run, but when you're doing a long run, often what you eat the night before fuels it as well. So that's what's in the stomach already. This is what's going in. This is pretty bread and butter for all of the Kenyans. No pun intended. This is what they'll have for breakfast most days. White bread occasionally a banana. It's that classic high carb, low protein, all the way through, mostly plant-based. I can imagine this gets pretty boring, but at the same time, maybe that's just because I'm not used to eating just plain white bread on its own. I have the same breakfast most days. I'd usually have porridge with some honey and some peanut butter or some toast, but with probably peanut butter on it. Actually, the only thing that's missing from this is being toasted butter, peanut butter, and then the banana sliced up on top. So it's only two ingredients away from being a breakfast I would normally eat. The last bit of bread and the last bit of banana. Ugh. It's so dry. Breakfast done. So I'll get the water, the chai tea down the hatch, and then just go see how it fuels the run, I guess. 13 miles for the long run, two slices of white bread, one banana, and a whole lot of liquids. Let's see how I go. Long run, done. 13 miles on the watch. Nice little tour, headed down on the canal, up in the hills, uh, Lime Park, Middlewood Way. Good run with the girls, and felt all right, actually. Stomach felt fine, having had the bread, banana, and chai this morning. Yeah, stomach didn't seem to react too much to it, which is, isn't surprising. It's a low residue kind of food diet and it's not too, too different from what I would normally have, apart from the peanut butter not being on the bread. <laughs> really start to feel my legs towards the end, which is just the gym from yesterday. That's nothing to do with the food, obviously. Chowed down on my post run, two slices of banana and chai tea with sugar again, just now. Bread getting really dry towards the end. I think that's just the fact that we were at the end of the loaf. And I found that by actually dipping the bread in the chai 
Thai tea. It was just a little bit more palatable, easier to chew on without drying my whole mouth up. Actually tasted all right, but you can't dunk bread in tea for very long because it obviously gets very soggy. So I felt a bit like a duck eating that. It was, it was okay. I feel like probably Elliot is having fresh baked bread. I know that they take turns to bake their own fresh white bread, which obviously I haven't done. I'm having four day old Morrison's toasty loaf. So maybe not quite as nice. I'm gonna drive home, get in the shower, and then cook me up some Elliot lunch. It's lunch time. We are having a Kipchoge classic, rice and beans. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes he has avocado, sometimes he doesn't. Depends if he can get hold of it. And Daniel is also having rice and beans with me, aren't you? Yep. You excited? Thrilled. I'm actually excited for this because I just feel like I need a bit of savoury food. Been eating a lot of sugar all day so far. I had another banana as well, by the way, I needed a snack. So just, I felt like I was having a bit of a sugar crash actually when I got back from the run. So I've had another banana. All I've eaten today is four slices of white bread and two bananas and two cups of chai tea with two spoonfuls of sugar in each. Yeah, ready for some savory, ready for a bit of protein with the beans. And I'm looking forward to hopefully this meal having a little bit more, wow, more flavor than plain white bread, which can't be difficult. Mm -mm -mm. So what's in here? Full disclaimer, I did not cook this. <laughs> Daniel did, so take it away. In the beans, it was just uh, a diced onion, some tomato puree, the beans, a little bit of chicken stock, and that was pretty much it. A little bit of salt, but no other seasoning at all. I'm making an absolute meal out of this. It's pretty good, not the best thing I've ever eaten, but it's not offensive. Pretty bland, probably would add a bit more salt, maybe some herbs, dare I say spices, but no. I can see why he eats this kind of stuff because it's not gonna mess up your stomach. It's not super heavy, it's not packed full of loads of different flavors and loads of ingredients that are gonna maybe upset your stomach. Pretty palatable, pretty easy to eat this day in, day out. I will say that I would probably get bored pretty quickly of eating this sort of stuff, but hey, if it works, if he likes it and that's what works for him, I mean, the guy's the goat, so down the hatch. Last little bit. That's lunch. I think I need to drink more water. He's drinking like three liters of water a day and I've drunk probably less than one liter. And it is two o'clock. Yeah, that was nice. It was nice to have something hot and something that's not bread and banana. The other thing to note is that that lunch would be what's fueling Elliot Kipchoge's second run of the day. Most days a week he'll run twice, apart from long run day, but his long run will be, you know, 20 miles, maybe more, maybe less. Um, one website said that they will run between 30 to 40K on a Sunday run off a couple of slices of white bread and maybe a banana, which is kind of insane. For me, like I couldn't imagine doing that. I only ran 13 miles this morning. I'm not running again later today, but that was a good amount for me for lunch. If I was Elliot Kipchoge right now, I'd be getting ready to go for a little afternoon nap to rest up and get ready for second run of the day. I'm not doing another run, but I am gonna have a nap because I just feel like it's the right thing to do, you know? Your circadian rhythm, your sleep cycle, and your eating cycle, they're kind of in sync, so I feel like, you know, it'd be rude not to have a nap if I'm eating like Elliot. is on the menu, Daniel. So we have got some corn flour for the ugali and then we have got, I'm gonna make a kind of green stew out of, I uh, couldn't find what they actually use in Kenya, but we've got frozen spinach and some Chinese cabbage that I'm gonna kind of riff with. But literally it's just onion, carrot, tomato, and then 
Maybe a little bit of spice. Maybe. About the spice. Well, I'm just going off a recipe. Is that what Elliot Kipchoge eats? I don't know. Do I need to eat spice? I'm, I'm... No, good. Okay, no spice in this house then. Ugali is the staple. We've got the cornmeal here. And when asked, Elliot Kipchoge said that this is his favorite food. Out of all the foods you can get on the planet, in the world, Ugali is the one. So, high expectations for this. It looks like a kind of thick, finer, kind of porridge, if that makes sense. So using flour instead of oats and you cook it with the water, but really, really reduce it down so you can even sort of slice it up. Looks quite stodgy. Have a feeling it's gonna be pretty tasteless, but really looking forward to giving it a try. This stew looks incredibly healthy. Obviously we're using spinach instead of managu, which is the leaf that they often cook with out there. It's a carbohydrates feast. Let's cook. Look, I'm cooking. I always cook. Pretty much done, I think. It's in a nice little round dough-like ball. And supposedly, if you put it on a plate, leave it to stand for 10 minutes, more of the water evaporates, and then you can kind of slice it up and it becomes a bit firmer. I'm excited to eat this one. <laughs> Sometimes this would be eaten with beef or goat, but we're going vegan and it actually smells Great. See what it's like to cut? Oh, that looks about right. That looks pretty similar to what Google said. It doesn't taste of much, to be honest. <laughs> it's mostly just texture. It reminds me of, it's like a mixture between mashed potato and bread, but tastes like corn. Now for the stew, that's good. It's like, tomato soup, but with crunch. Yeah, it's pretty good. And actually, I do think they go together. So, verdict. I don't think I put enough salt in the ugali, but it goes really well with that stew. And what we're just doing now, which is going a little bit off-piste, is having sliced the ugali up, we're frying it, or just, you know, a tiny, tiny bit of oil, and just heating up the slices so they go a bit crispy. It literally tastes like popcorn bread. It's so good. What are you doing? Well, it wouldn't be a meal eaten by me if I didn't try it with a bit of ketchup. Does Elliot have ketchup? I don't know, should we ask him? I don't, my conscience cannot allow me. No, I don't think he does, but I've got to find out what ugali tastes like with ketchup. Oh, I'm getting ready to wind down and go to bed and I'm having a milky drink, which is not quite the same as what Elliot would have. I couldn't get hold of it and I wouldn't have a clue where to start to make it. And the drink that he would normally have is something called Mersic, which and, and forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but it's a kind of fermented hot milk drink, which is supposed to aid digestion and is also supposedly good for reducing fatigue. So a great thing to drink if you're doing a lot of miles and working out a lot, which Elliot obviously is. Instead though, I'm having my own heated up milk drink with hot chocolate powder in it which is quite far away from fermented milk drink, but we're getting to the end of the day now, and I must admit I've slightly fallen out of following Elliot Kipchoge's diet word for word. It's been really tough, actually. I felt quite hungry all day. Maybe I've not had big enough portion sizes or I've not had enough snacks sort of in between the meals, but I think 
part of it is that it's a lot lower protein content and a lot lower fat content than I usually have in my diet, and it's mostly carbs. Pretty much all of his snacks are fruit, which is great, but it doesn't really fill you up for very long. So I had a pear after lunch and I had a satsuma after dinner, but I was still left feeling hungry and my stomach started grumbling later on. So as well as this, I have also had a couple of chocolate chip cookies, but that doesn't mean that this deviates from Elliot Kipchoge's diet because he has said that when he wants it, he eats chocolate. I eat chocolate once in a while. So I guess chocolate chip cookies are essentially the same thing and I'm basically replicating his diet exactly as he would have it, right? Another reason that what I've eaten today hasn't been as similar as it could be, I suppose, is that he gets everything or pretty much everything from his diet locally sourced from the local markets in Kenya and most of it happens to be organic as well, which is pretty sick. So how did it feel to eat like a world record holder for an entire day? On the run, I felt fine. Throughout the day, I felt fine. I did feel different because it's just very different from my usual diet. And I think the lack of flavor and the lack of variety made things get quite boring quite quickly. And I think when that happens, you tend to eat less. So there are a couple of times where I didn't finish what was on my plate because every mouthful tastes the same. And I think maybe that's why I potentially didn't eat enough. Could I eat this long term? Absolutely not. I need way more protein in my diet, more variety, more flavor, and more fat content. That's just what I'm used to. That's what I know works for me. And this is obviously what works for Elliot Kipchoge. Everyone is different. You are entitled to make your own different nutritional choices and different things will work for different people. And that's okay. Would you consider eating a little bit more like Elliot? Do you think it would make you run faster? Let me know in the comments section below if anyone is planning on cooking up an Ugali feast which I would recommend with ketchup. And while I might not even be close to world record pace in the marathon, I have run a marathon earlier this year. I ran my debut marathon in Seville, targeting a time of 2.32. And you can check out this video here to see exactly how it went and stay tuned for updates about training for my next marathon very soon. Big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are the real ones. Love the grind. Bye.